we both had a fair amount of experience in real estate, and Charlie made his early money in real estate. The second point is the more important point. Real estate is not a commodity, but I think it tends to be more accurately priced, particularly developed real estate, more accurately priced most of the time. Now, during the RTC period, when you had huge amounts of transactions and you had a you had an owner that didn't want to be an owner in a very big way and they didn't know what the hell they owned and all of that sort of thing. I mean, you had a lot of mispricing then, and I know a few people in this room that made a lot of money off of that. But under most conditions, it's, it's hard to find real estate that's really mispriced. Warren Buffett is criticized a lot for his views on modern digital assets such as Bitcoin or NFTs. He is called Bitcoin a worthless asset that does not produce anything and he would not buy all of the Bitcoin in the world for $25. Even when people are willing to pay up to $70,000 per coin and its total capitalization crossed the trillion dollar mark. But Buffett thinks that's nonsense. It's not the first time he has criticized the new emerging technology so harshly. If you go back to the dot-com bubble, he held similar views about the internet companies. His close friend Bill Gates tried multiple times to convince him to invest in tech companies such as Microsoft, but his answer was the same every single time. He has missed many great opportunities, from Amazon to Netflix to Tesla. Each of these stocks grew by a few thousand percent at least. A thousand dollar investment in Tesla when it went public would today worth around $225,000. $5,000 investment would have made you a million dollars. A few million dollar investment into these companies would worth today at least a few hundred million dollars. Despite the fact that he has missed on so many great opportunities, his net worth is over a hundred million dollars at times when the economy is falling into a recession and the stock market is plummeting. In fact, during the last recession back in 2008, he was named the richest person in the world, toppling even Bill Gates. But besides crypto, tech and NFTs, there is another industry that Warren Buffett has always avoided, the housing market. Believe it or not, Warren Buffett never invests in real estate. The only real estate he has ever purchased is the house he bought in 1958 in Omaha, Nebraska for $31,500, the equivalent of roughly $285,000 in 2020 dollars, where he has lived since then. So the natural question is, why the most successful investor in history never invests in real estate? Why does he avoid real estate even though real estate is the safest investment out there? Does Warren Buffett know something that we don't? We'll answer all of these questions and many more. But before we do that, give this video a thumbs up and let's find out. You can criticize Warren Buffett's investment strategies as much as you want. But that's not going to change the fact that his commitment to his strategy led him to outperform the S&P 500 by 84% over the last 20 years and made him the most successful investor of all time. He's been in the stock market since like forever and he continuously made successful investments. Warren Buffett was once asked what does he think about buying a house? His response was firm and straightforward. Buy a house if you know that you're going to stay in one area for a long time. In fact, he said that a 30-year mortgage is the best instrument in the world. If it's such a great investment, why he always avoids real estate? Even when the housing bubble collapsed, Warren Buffett was sitting on an enormous amount of cash and knew that the housing market would climb sooner or later. So why didn't he invest in real estate? There are many reasons. Let's start with the first one. Investing in real estate is unlike investing in the stock market. Managing a property is a full-time business. Maybe one property isn't a big deal, especially when it's just a side hustle. But the moment it turns into multiple properties, it's a full-time business. Just because you have a property doesn't mean you will always be able to rent it out, but you still have to keep making your mortgage payments. Secondly, something always breaks down. A property needs to be taken care of and during crises, you might not be able to rent it out for longer periods. 
that doesn't mean it's a bad business. It just means it's a business, which means you have to spend an equal amount of time managing it. That's why Warren Buffett never went into real estate, since he knows that his time is limited and getting into real estate means that he would have much less time to look for great investments. To be clear, Warren Buffett invested in real estate throughout his career, but he mostly invested in rates over the years. In fact, he currently owns a large stake in Store Capital Corp. It's a publicly traded American real estate investment trust, an investment fund that invests in real estate. Investing in them is like investing in stocks. The second reason why Buffett avoids real estate is because how difficult it is to find a great deal in the market. Here is how you can make a great investment. You have to find a great business that is inaccurately priced. Price lower than its actual cost for one reason or another. It could be a business that has a perfect foundation that can easily scale up, or might have developed a technology that will bring massive profits once it's produced at massive levels. The stock market is filled with inaccurately priced stocks, especially during a crisis. When people panic and start selling, the sell off crush prices. Interest rate hikes scare off investors, for example, and they start massively selling off their stocks to the point where Apple stock, for instance, fell by around 25% from April to June. Did Apple lose a quarter of its workforce in a few months? Did its sales drop by 25% in a few months? No. The panic drove the market down, so even great businesses suffered. That's why it's much easier to find a great deal in the stock market than in real estate. First of all, prices in real estate don't fluctuate that fast. Yes, we have real estate crashes from time to time, but they happen once in one or two decades. And if there is a great deal in the markets, a real estate agent in that area will most likely close the deal for himself before everyone else finds that out. We don't have like a real estate exchange as we do for stocks where people can go through multiple properties from the comfort of their offices. Because unlike real estate, companies have to go through a lengthy and harsh process of getting approved to be able to list their stocks in the stock market. They're also required to publish their financial statements every quarter, which makes it possible for Buffett to have a competitive advantage when finding great deals in the market. Real estate doesn't produce much. It provides you with a roof over your head, and that's it. Yes, it can be a better roof, but how many people are willing to pay over $10,000 per night? However, a business can scale up its operations and grow infinitely. Buffett acquired 5% of Apple in 2018 for $36 billion. In a couple of years, when Apple crossed a $3 trillion market, his stake grew to $160 billion, and he has also enjoyed regular dividends from Apple, averaging about $775 million annually. There is no way he could have pulled out something like that in real estate. And that's not even his best deal. Buffett paid $25 million for C's Candy in 1972, and it has returned $1.35 billion to Berkshire since then even when factored in the $32 million Berkshire has invested into the business over the years, this is an extraordinary return on an investment. The third reason is that there is just more money in the stock market than in real estate. It's a plain fact. The United States real estate market is around $3.7 trillion as of 2021. On the other hand, the stock market is about $93 trillion. The housing market is a fraction of the stock market. That's why there is not a single real estate investor in the top 10 richest people in the world. All of them have invented either something or started some kind of a business. In fact, the richest real estate investor is Xiao Qi a 91-year-old real estate magnate who is the 29th richest person in the world with a net worth of $28.6 billion. He is not just an investor. He's a real estate developer based in Hong Kong. The richest real estate developer in the United States is Donald Brand with a net worth of just $17 billion. Despite all of the opportunities in the stock market, 
Buffett is aiming to take the best advantage out of his time and skills. If he can make over a hundred billion dollars by investing in the stock market, why go to real estate? What made him so successful in the first place was his commitment to his strategies and principles. He never jumps to different assets just because it is hyped. Maybe that's the most important lesson we can learn from him. Buying a house is a great decision if you're planning to stay somewhere for a long time. But getting into real estate is a business. And the question is, do you want to start such a business? If the answer is no, because you are in a different business, there is no point in getting yourself into a business in that you're neither competent or passionate. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.